Active Directory Rights Management Services allows us to put additional controls on our file and folder access. I'm going to go to where it says Add Roles and Features on my server. That's going to be my file server. And I'm going to continue on until I get to the Roles page. And here we can see the option to select Active Directory Rights Management Services. And of course, we want to add the related features to go with it and click Next. We'll continue clicking Next until we can get to the Install button and install Active Directory Rights Management Services. While I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and close and go to Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers, and I'm going to add a few accounts. I'm going to go down to the Users folder, right-click and choose New User. And the first one's going to be RMS1. That's going to be our first user. And I'll put in the login information and complete. I'm going to copy RMS1 and call this one RMS2. Now I need to go into each one and add in an email address in the first tab under general in email. Now, even if I don't have email on the server, I'm still going to need to put in some sort of email address. So I'll put in for the email RMS1 at the domain name that I have here because I don't have email, but that's okay. It's still gonna be required in order to do that. Now, if you do have email, feel free to go ahead and put the email address in there. And I'll click okay. And now we can continue. Now that the installation is complete, I'm going to go up to the triangle and choose Perform Additional Configuration Settings. And I'm going to continue by creating an RMS cluster. So I'm going to create a new Active Directory Rights Management root cluster, which is going to be required in order to continue. It's also going to require a database. If you have a SQL database, you can choose it now. If not, you can choose to install the Windows internal database. And in most cases, that works fine. Now what we need to do is to designate an RMS admin. So we're going to need to go back into Active Directory Users and Computers, right click, choose New User, and create a user called RMS Admin. You can call this user anything you'd like, but we need to also make sure that this user has domain administrator rights as well. And that's because the user is going to need to log in locally to the domain controller. So they need to be members of a group that's going to be able to do that. Now we'll go back into the RMS Manager and specify the user. And I'll click Next. And I recommend you go with the 2048-bit keys because it gives you better protection. I'm going to designate the RMS Centrally Managed Key Storage, but if you'd like, you can use a CSP key storage instead. That's a cluster key which is stored in a clustered server environment, and that helps future nodes join this cluster. Now I'm putting in the cluster key password, which we're going to need later on, and now it's going to use the default website in IIS. If you have a certificate, you can use HTTPS, which is recommended, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and use the unencrypted connection instead, which uses port 80. I've entered in the fully qualified domain name, which is the DCO2 server, but if you want to create a special DNS name, such as RMS, dot, whatever your domain is, you can do that. You just need to go into the DNS manager and make sure it points back to this server, creating a new A record. And I'm going to choose the DCO2 for the licensor certificate. I'll choose to register the SCP right now, which is going to be the service connection point. And that basically just registers the RMS service into Active Directory. And I'll click Install. You need to make sure that your client computer, which we'll be logging into shortly, has Microsoft Word installed on it, because that's what we'll be using for the demonstration. There are many different applications that support RMS, but we'll be using Word for this demo. While I'm waiting, I'm going to create a folder in File Explorer, and I'm going to call it Secret. So I'll choose New Folder, call it Secret. 
And I'm going to share that folder. I can choose the regular sharing. I like advanced sharing because it gives me more options. And I'm going to choose the domain users rather than everyone because using everyone means that even people outside of Active Directory would have rights to it. Now I'm going to go into the security tab and I'm going to make sure domain users also have full access. Now, just to confirm this works properly, I'll just put in the UNC path to that folder. So DCO2, and there's my folder called secret. So we know that it's working. Our rights management services have been successfully deployed. So I'll click close. And I'll go back to tools and open up Active Directory Rights Management Services. If you see an error that you cannot connect, just log off the computer or sign out and then log or sign back in. And here we can see that I did connect successfully. Now I'm going to right click on the rights management templates and go to properties. I'm going to choose the enable export option and we're going to put in the UNC path to that folder. which is the name of the server, the fully qualified domain name backslash secret, and click Apply. I'm going to click OK, and on the right-hand side, I'm going to click on the Create Distributed Rights Policy. I'll click Add, and I'm going to give it a name of Test. You need to put at least something in the description. I'll just put a period and click Add. I'll click Next. And now we're at the user rights page. I'm going to click add and I'm going to put in the email address. So remember we had to put an email address in the user earlier. This is why we had to do that. So I'm going to put in the RMS one user and I'm going to give that user full access. Then I'm going to click add again and now I'm going to put in the RMS two user. And I'm going to go ahead and give the RMS2 user just the view option. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to choose Never Expires, but you can certainly change that if you'd like. And now we're at the Specify Extended Policy page. And this gives us additional options, such as enabling users to view protected content using a browser add-on instead of just using, say, Microsoft Word. You could require a new user license every time the context is consumed as well. In most cases, this won't be necessary, so you can just go ahead and click Next. If you'd like to require revocation of a certificate, you can choose that. We chose HTTP instead of HTTPS, so we don't have to worry about that. And click Finish. And now our policy has been completed. Now I need to switch over into my client running Microsoft Word. I'm going to first log in as RMS1 and see what kind of rights we can get. Next, I'm going to go down to the control panel. So I'll just type that into a search and open it up. So next, I need to go to where it says Internet Options. And I'm going to go to the Security tab and then go to Local Internet. I'm going to click on Sites and then Advanced. And I'll type in the URL of our server. Remember, if you are using a certificate, to add in an S after the P, so that way it's secure. And I'll click Add and Close, click OK, and OK. Next, I'm going to open up Microsoft Word, and I can do that just by typing Word in the search box. Go ahead and open it up. I'm going to type in Hello World. After File, I'm going to go to Info, which is the top option, and choose Protect Document. Then I'm going to go to where it says Restrict Access and Connect to Rights Management Servers and Get Templates. Now I need to go back to Protect Document, Restrict Access, and there's our test that was created earlier. So now we see the document is being protected. And I'm going to go to where it says Save As. 
browse. And I'm going to browse to the DCO2 location. And choose Secret. I'll save it as Hello World. And save. Now I want to go to where it says View Permissions. It should show that I have all permissions and I do. Now I'm going to sign out. I'm going to log in as RMS2, and I'm going to access that file from the network, and it should show that I only have view permissions. I'm logged in as RMS2. I'll open up Word once again. And I'm going to open up Other Documents, choose Browse, Put in backslash backslash DCO2 for the server. Double click on secret and double click on hello world. Now it prompts me to log in, which is an additional security feature. Even though I'm logged into Active Directory, that's OK. I still need to log in once again just to get access for rights management services. So I've entered my RMS2 email that's in the same as the properties of the user. Hello World opened up. Now I can go to View Permissions and take a look. I only have View Permissions. All other permissions are blocked. So Rights Management Server worked. Typically, we would add in permissions to the Security tab and the Share tab, as shown earlier. But adding in Rights Management Services rights gives us additional protection to files that we need in our Microsoft environment.